Hello everybody, welcome back to controlling the BBT playlist. In this video we will describe the hardware of the BBT system and we will model the plant in Altair Activate using different approaches. Let's start. In the BBT we can identify five main components which are the power box, AC servos, steel ball, the ZC touch sensor and the Arduino. The objective of this mechatronic system is to control the position of the ball. In fact, the ball position measured by the touch sensor is fed as input to the controller, which comparing it with the reference produces an error signal. This error signal is converted accordingly to a certain control logic into a command, which drives the RC servos. The movement of the servos is transmitted to the table through rotated bearings, allowing the ball to follow the set reference. This working principle can be summed up with this block diagram, and in Altair Activate we can easily reproduce this diagram, as it is shown here, and leveraging its libraries we will model each block. In this video we will focus on modeling the plant, which is made up of the mechanical system and the actuators, which are the servo motors. Let's start with actuators. The servo motors are position control motors, hence they can be modeled as closed loop systems whose input is the reference angle and whose output is the actual angle reached by the motor. For our application they have been modeled with this first order transfer function. From the transfer function we can see the time constant of the RC servos. The time constant is an important parameter for first order systems because it defines the step response as well as the bandwidth. Looking at the step response, we can see that the time taken by the output to reach roughly 63% of the input is exactly the time constant. So it determines how fast the system is. Reducing it, we expect a faster system. But let's check it in Activate. So, First of all, we design a system with a time constant equal to 0.01 second. We give as input a step reference and we plot both the output and the input into a scope. Let's simulate it. Then we design another system with a smaller time constant and we connect it to the scope as well. If we run the simulation, we can visualize that the second system is faster because it has a smaller time constant. As we mentioned before, the time constant also determines the bandwidth of the first order system. In fact, the cutoff frequency of the system is defined as 1 over the time constant. At the cutoff frequency, the system response gets attenuated by 3 dB. We can easily visualize it in Activate as well. This time we are going to do it from the common window, but you can replicate it using the initialization tab. We just define the transfer function and we use the built-in border function. Now we can move to the mechanical system. The equations of motion can be derived equivalently using the Lagrangian or the Newtonian approach. The choice between one approach or the other is arbitrary. Sometimes, though, one approach might be easier. The advantage of the Lagrangian approach is that it works with scalars. So there is no need to work out all the forces which are acting on the system, as instead is needed to write the Newton's second law. This is because the equations of motion are derived from kinematic and the potential energy which are expressed as function of generalized coordinates. These generalized coordinates are arbitrarily chosen independent variables which describe every configuration of the system and their number is equal to the number of degrees of freedom of the system. Once the kinetic and potential energy have been computed, the Lagrangian can be defined and the equations of motion can be derived from the Lagrangian, leveraging the Euler-Lagrange equations. It's important to notice that the right-hand side of these equations is different from zero, 
if there are non-conservative forces acting on the system. In our case, considering the physics of the problem and the assumptions we are about to make, all the conservative forces are acting on the ball. Hence, the right hand side of these equations will be equal to zero for us. In order to simplify the analytical formulation, we make some physical assumptions. So, the ball table contact is never lost, the ball rolls without slipping, and the friction is neglected. In another video, we will see that even though we are simplifying the physics, we are still getting a model accurate enough. But now, let's move on with the Lagrangian approach. We can set the x and y coordinates of the ball as our generalized coordinates. At this point, we can write the expression of the kinetic energy, both translational and rotational, and the expression of the potential energy. Before applying the Euler-Lagrange equations, we can leverage some basic trigonometry to find the relation between the inclination of the table and the angular rotation of the motors. Finally, using the Euler-Lagrange equation of the previous slide, we come up with the nonlinear equations of motion, which through linearization can be turned into linear equations of motion. Why shall we use linear equations, which are an approximation of the nonlinear ones, instead of using directly the nonlinear equations? Well, the first reason is that leveraging the Laplace transform, we can turn them into transfer functions, which are easier to handle since they are algebraic equations. And this means that we can easily derive a mathematical model for the whole plant that we can use to check the stability, to design the PID controller, and to investigate the frequency response of the system. For example, for our plant, we can easily derive the transfer functions just multiplying together the transfer functions we obtain for the actuators and the mechanical system. We can see that it is made up of two independent third order systems that we can easily model and activate. In this block diagram, we can visualize the transfer functions of the actuators and of the mechanical system. All their parameters are defined in the initialization tab. We can set a step reference for the actuator controlling the y-axis. And we see as physically expected that the ball keeps accelerating. We can try to stop the acceleration, giving another reference in the opposite direction. This time we see that the acceleration is zero after a certain time, but the ball keeps moving because there's no force stopping it. If we increase the second reference, we see that the ball stops at a certain time and starts moving at the opposite direction. Though we didn't manage to make the ball stop and stay still at a certain location, in the next videos we will try to achieve it, introducing some feedback and control. Another reason to use linear equations is that we can rearrange them into the state space representation, which can be used to implement model control techniques as well as design state observers. At this point, the natural question is, don't we need at all the nonlinear equations? Of course we need them, because they are a more accurate description of the system, but still they are not computationally expensive in a simulation environment like Alter Activate, which means that, for example, they can be used by an optimizer, such as the Bobby QA, to optimize the gains of the PID controller, which has been designed with the linear equations of motion. Once that we have obtained the optimized gains, we might want to deploy them into a more realistic representation of the mechanical system, which get rid of some or all the assumptions we have made before. And for this purpose, we can build a multi-body model using, for example, Alter Motion View. And in Alter Activate, we can also run a co-simulation with this multi-body model in order to virtually validate our controller. So, going back to the block diagram, we have seen how to model the actuators and the mechanical system. In Alter Activate, we can handle all the variants in one model. 
and let's see how. Inside the plant super block, we can see that there are three different variants of the plant. And through the include diagram, we can easily switch from one to the other. In fact, here we can select the number of variants, which are then listed in the second column. And changing the value of this variable, we can switch from one variant to the other. Now, let's have a look at different variants. The linear one, we can see that the actuators are modeled as transfer functions. We can also recognize the true transfer function of the mechanical system. The nonlinear one, this time the math expression block and two integrators are used to build the nonlinear equations of motion. And the last is the multibody one. Through this block, a simulation is performed between activate and motion solve. Finally, once the controller has been validated with the multibody model, it can be used to control the real system. In this case, the control is performed by Alter Activate, which sends and receives information from the hardware through the Arduino. Of course, this new simulation can be included in the same Activate model we have seen before. We just need to add one more block to the include diagram. That's it for this video, thank you for watching and see you at the next one.